Section one of Poems of Puncture. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Poems of Puncture by Amanda McKittrick Ross. Preface read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist some will damn me till all's no more others curse as ne'er before some will stroke my back for joy that i my pen did thus employ but ere you damn or curse or stroke just treat my verses as a joke and if the cuddy-brained can't see where lies the joke just think of me end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Dedication by Amanda McKittrick Ross Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist To him who is most charitable, truthful, kind and true, Whose life is spent in doing good to him, her and you, to him whose proud old name is loved in every home and nook in Antrim's ancient county, I dedicate my book. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Defence by Amanda McKittrick Ross Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist in rain or drought sunshine or thaw women for men would break the law so why should irene by folk be cursed she wasn't the last she isn't the first who stole away from her law-bound chief to gratify that which classed her thief for too many lovers make a <gasps> of the saintliest wife a man e'er wore for clammy passion they damn god's law daunted at nothing void of awe where sexes seek and genders quell heaven's forgotten hugged is hell written eighteen hundred and ninety eight end of poem this recording is in the public domain A Limb of Law by Amanda McKittrick Ross Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist Geordie was a lawyer bold with wig, sleek and brown. He wore to cope with his defects a horrid, hairless crown. A face all lit with laughter were your purse fat and full. But show to him a wrinkled one then geordie grew quite cool like all his brother bubblies he loved your lucre well so long as it he pocketed you then could go to mm. old geordie loved to stuff his pouch with guineas thick or thin to guard against a future state he knew awaited him his huge white tusks were false ones to match the wig he wore his heart was likewise ditto deception to the core his tongue was oiled with cunning his eyes cased round with fraud his actions solved the problem i don't believe in god very snotty was old geordie and pompous to a pea he liked the folk to honour him pay homage to a tea if once his coins you trampled on revenge he'd show you then the wicked of the wickedest the beastliest of men presumption pride pomposity were traits he tightly hugged old geordie felt so sure one day he would be doubtless dubbed but alas alas died did this ass into the grave was hurled without title tear or tremor to face another world 
he's off to join a regiment of legal rascals there where conscience will him master while revelling in hell's flare for never will a law bum roost on heaven's rung to dirty on the saint below ding dong dung written eighteen hundred and eighty one end of poem this recording is in the public domain mickey monkey face mcbleer by amanda mckittrick ross read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist readers did you ever hear of mickey monkey face mcbleer six feet and a half of lies and fraud ten bob to the pound one devil no god a legal log who would grab your gold and for which he'd sell his soul i'm told who'd strip your pocket as well as mine and tamper with your hmm and wine his hair is bleached with a downy crown his lugs are small thatched round and round with little tufts of a dirty hue but that's no matter to me or you this lengthy tool has wee grey eyes away far back from earth and sky heavily fringed with coarse rough hair labelling him a human bear his snout is long with a flattish top lined inside with a slimy crop his mouth like a slit in a money-box portrays his kindred to a fox from his chin there droops a greasy beard goat-like in hue and style i've heard his wrinkled neck is long and thin to see it your sight must be in trim his legs are fleshless props of bone ending in paddlers always prone to corns and bunions by the score of crooked joints he has them galore these together with heart and hand form what you'd call a man for further proof well i blush to tell my readers now must go to Oh written eighteen hundred and eighty four End of Poem This recording is in the public domain The Old Windmill by Amanda McKittrick Ross read for Librivox dot org by Newgate Novelist down by the draughts of an old windmill there sat on a ledge of stone a middle-aged fat-faced clumsy man with a voice you'd call his own his hair was burry and coarse as straw his face was a sunburnt tan his eyes were at war with each other i saw he told me his name was sam i've searched quoth he the country wide for friends whom i used to know and here am i by this old windmill without either friend or foe black death hath claimed my kith and kin that treacherous foe of fate now i'm left bereft to plough through life with no one to love or hate tis strange i've strayed to this old windmill to meet such a handsome maiden my travels ne'er to me have shown one half with such beauty laden oh say will you join your life with mine say could you love me ever by god if you do i swear to-night till death we will never sever his eyes grew bright with a flame of light yet filled again with pity as i stretched my hand to say good-night ere i moved towards the city ah sweetest angel these eyes e'er saw you'll never go and leave me with a heart all pricked with pangs of throe ah maiden dear don't grieve me haunted for i with your face i'll be stuccoed with rarest charm just say you'll love me then god above me curse me if i thee harm 
though i'm clad in rags and tatters torn yet these cover a soul of honour and a heart of joy if you me employ to be its worthy donor i am poor of purse pray is this a curse but once it teemed with plenty then i was pressed to dine with the king now that my means are scanty all seems so changed since fate me maimed and robbed me of costly pleasure there are now no dames with perfumed names to come and steal my treasure driven here by the steed of fate o oh god give me strength to mutter darling my own my heaven my earth see how i shake and flutter come into my arms o oh my charge of charms till i clasp and kiss you ever tell me you love me then heaven above me will seal my bold endeavour then we swayed and swooned i and honeymooned and plighted our troth together for bad or good we have eaten the food digested in every weather tis lady lightheart now i pose twas a lord i wedded surely who feigned a beggar to test my love the love of yours so truly written eighteen hundred and eighty seven end of poem this recording is in the public domain a wish by amanda mckittrick ross Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist I wish you all a diamond year, each day a golden god of cheer, a silver pipe to smoke quite handy, a copper flask well filled with brandy. Don't let these make you unruly, while ever I remain, thine truly. Written 1875 End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Ugliest Brute in Britain by Amanda McKittrick Ross. Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Oh, bully rag, oh, bully rag, a boasty, brainless, empty gag. You fancy you're a clever fellow, because amongst the brutes you bellow. Tis generally the low-bred hound who barks and makes the biggest sound. For one whose pedigree is good will not acknowledge aught that's rude. Oh, as a shell of law you pose, I hear, battling for a lower sphere. Tis then you'll meet your pal, so dear, Mickey Monkey Face McBleer, who shovels coke to the reverend bloke, because he gave him lots of rope to right the folk he robbed in town, evading thus the clergy's frown. May I here describe this scathing scribe who lives by tarnishing your hide, his coat tails ever on the swag while carrying his old stinking bag, how he struts on with its filthy handle grasped by his paw of vice and scandal, as if bound for heaven, sweet and sainted, though with hell he's best acquainted. He's low of flesh and high of bone, with heart as callous as a stone, shoulders square and a crop of hair, just like my old chestnut mare, a forehead low and pencil marked about the brows to make them arched, a pair of eyes a cloudy grey, so like a pig's, the folk all say. One star is square, shaped like a goat's, the other brother to a stoat's, between the cheeks there shoots a hose, short, with two spouts you'd call a nose. His blood is dirty, poor and muddy, not like the blood of anybody, producing sometimes tiny creepers, amusing to all eager peepers. His upper lip is sunken in to cover rotten pegs within. His chin he cocks up when he's spouting, shaking his pow when he is shouting, 
thinking all such traits are clever as he fights his flimsy cases ever fortifying him a donkey like many another brother flunky his neck is long and a rammy yellow which helps to lengthen this base fellow his lugs are large and lie in line with a snout that god forbid twas mine his head shaped like a rotten pear has bumps stuck round it here and there stuffed with muddy brains and batter with a slit in front whence oozes clatter his arms are lengthy bony wattles and at a sail would go as chattels a body shooting forth in branches backed up by two poor dirty haunches while a portion of it don't despise it makes young generations rise to bless or curse the lustful donor who prides in being called its owner on his chill-blained feet he often hobbles over where his brother cobbles who's a brick at boring holes in leather and closing them in every weather for patching well you couldn't match him like bully rag you've got to watch him and like his legal brother noodle jinx the god of cobbler doodle readers one and all beware of this and every legal bear whose hobby is to catch all clowns who don't know black from white or brown if perchance you are too clever soon they'll from your service sever but if you don't know b from ben they'll play whack at your silver then now bully rag you vulgar gag don't shake so much your empty head for you'll soon find to every mind your flaunts are but a puff of wind that stinks the air when you are there and sickens all your brother bears take my advice and go to grass and graze like any other ass you'll be at home amongst the brutes there's nothing better will you suit than braying with a donkey brother out amongst the grass and heather unrefined for shed or shanty on my soul you'll look right canty if you fail to like it well go where your legal brothers dwell written eighteen hundred and eighty six end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Fanny Malone by Amanda McKittrick Ross Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist There lived on a mountainside a maid I once well knew. Her name was Fanny Malone, who mostly dressed in blue when i was but a schoolgirl she was trim and tall older than i bolder than i and wore a silken shawl the cottage fanny lived in was thatched with heather brown far up a lonely mountain away from any town since ever i remember she always lived alone queen of the mountain district she many acres owned twas a snowy night in winter the flakes fell soft and fast covering all the country with a mantle white and vast the light in fanny's window shone steadily around to guide the lonely traveller whose step was lost to sound hark there's the stroke of midnight i must to bed repair fanny spake these words aloud as nobody was there she reached forth for the candle when lo she saw a face against the pane before she drew the window blind across ah madam don't be frightened i have wandered lost my way i saw your joyful light shine forth please let me in i pray i'm faint and weary walking my heart is torn and sad if you do not let me in sweet maid i feel i'm going mad i'm a major in the army under our blessed queen i've paid her homage kissed her hand her aide de camp have been i belong to castle wellin not very far from here god grant me strength to reach it but this i greatly fear i'll neither hurt nor harm you sweet maid of beauty great if only me you shelter from such choking blinding flakes i'll pay you for your trouble i'll shield you from all fear if your door to me you open at which i'm now so near 
ah sir your words you've spoken well but i'm a lonely maid i've lived for well nigh twenty years upon this mountain side my door i've never opened once after night's dark pall was spread around this cottage ground my castle dear my all i was left a little orphan in the care of rosy ray whose mother was an actress to sing and dance and play she died when i was thirteen years exactly to a week since then i've lived here quite alone such life i find a treat i've read and read of men like you who shelter bought and got upon a lonely mountain track when death they only sought so pray don't urge upon me to ope to you my door i'm sorry to refuse you but don't request me more ah madam i am dying cold and hunger me accost if you fail to give me shelter upon my word i'm lost i don't mind so much the body it will very soon decay but i have got a soul to save for ever and for i i've sown my seeds of wildness i'm reaping them just now i wish to be repentant oh can you tell me how my strength is ebbing from me god's angry with me still i'll crave for time for things sublime all evil thoughts to kill too late too late are words i hate but there might still be time for me to seek forgiveness for every sin and crime i crave your leave to enter pray shelter me to-night tis aid i want my sins me haunt o oh god my wrongs thou right don't treat me as a ruffian i'm honour to the core if you have any sympathy you'll open wide your door i ask of you no favour without a due reward i only wish to die where some one will this body guard my soul seems soiled and dirty to you i make it known and in this state can't enter god's holy spotless home i hear its tired echo against this ear of woe bid farewell to my body in tones of hopeless throe ah for god's sake hear me maiden give me the aid i ask i really can no further go my limbs refuse the task is there no pity in your heart pray is it one of steel to-morrow it will be too late i make my last appeal if i could reach my mother she'd throw open wide her door my father me would welcome as oft he did before but too late it is the echo that rings within my ear if you fail to give me shelter or my words of pity fear ah oh, sir don't think me cruel but i dread the words of man i live alone no one i own nor seek i heart or hand if i perchance you shelter god knows what sort of end would happen to a lonely maid without a single friend you may be bright as bravery you may be kind and true but i have read so much of men i have no faith in you so move away dear stranger i'll show you down the hill and again i'll place my candle on the little window-sill no sound came ever after but just at dawn next day i beheld a crowd of people not very far away while on the ground there did abound a heap of whitest snow beneath which lay the body of major matt monroe twas then my conscience stabbed me all seemed to me so dark this precious soul i might have saved now lay both cold and stark his pleading words i think i hear i see that face so white against the little window-pane upon that snowy night readers if ever you are asked to do a kindly deed go render all the help you can to any one in need for bear in mind the day will dawn when someone's aid you'll want ah never let the words too late your conscience ever haunt written eighteen hundred and seventy eight end of poem this recording is in the public domain rover by amanda mckittrick ross read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist rover is a pretty dog with glossy glossy skin he watches like the devil you me and him his eyes would twin a preacher's always on the move his face is grave and saddened which any one can prove 
rover is a pretty dog he watches all the folk who stumps along the footpath while some his coat will stroke let one who is a prowler be seen about or near tis then he turns out growler but this is nothing queer rover is a pretty dog despite his greyish face like me he once was younger and quicker in the pace his breast is quite a picture down which is traced a line of hair so white and glossy this little dog of mine rover is a pretty dog he loves his master's tread twould do you good to hear him beg a bit of bread he does the thing so canty you've got to laugh aloud for though he's only a dog he's really very proud rover is a pretty dog he wags his tail with glee as the cups and saucers rattle he knows he's in for tea just offer this infusion to rover without cream he'll sniff all o'er his platter and very angry seem rover is a pretty dog he knows what people say scold him then he droops his head and shyly walks away praise him and he waltzes right about your feet talk to him he'll talk to you in groaning accents sweet rover is a pretty dog could teach the human creature love in all its many forms he's love in every feature this world would be a pleasure to all within its rim if to a certain extent its folk would follow him rover is a pretty dog he'll chase dull care away with kindness he will conquer no matter what you say beat him he will don a frown then reach you his wee paw which means oh i'll forgive you this is the better law rover is a pretty dog his ways most folk should follow obedience personified none of his ways are hollow he'll lick the hand that harms him readers do thou the same he likewise will caress you if him you wrongly blame rover is a pretty dog i'd rather have him far than human creatures one might meet whose words are always war whose acts are mean and meddling and give the judas dart every time they meet you they try to stab your heart rover is a pretty dog he has a winning way you see it's not the gifted who kindest things do say for rover though he's speechless of love you'd learn far more from him though only a dog than from any social ahem written nineteen hundred and two end of poem this recording is in the public domain reverend goliath gin bottle by amanda mckittrick ross read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist his reverence looks big but he never looks trig with a face like a fire brick whitish and long his globes are like holes you would see in a blanket when burned round and wide by a fire that's strong his forehead is flat but no matter for that on itself are two hairbrushes turned up on end just like you'd see on an old japanese so these go for brows on my clergyman friend his hair was once blacker but now it is chequered which if chipped off and woven would make a wee shawl he could don on a sunday for sure it's the fashion for clergy to spout in a bit over all his neck like a bullock's gets streaked like a tulip when bawling forth phrases of taunt crammed with jeer impressing the jinnies who listen his whinnies that he is the bully will rule them with fear this footstool of foppery crammed with black mockery is a traitor to christ to his people his god he assumes the black ensign as a token or symbol that he is a christian but alas he's a fraud 
so don't be deceived in this mock limb of saintdom who'd succour the villain the cheat and the rogue and then the next moment he'd turn and disown it and swear he detested the same ones by god he's a tyrant by nature in every feature in home or in pulpit the tyranny's there i've known him to pitch his poor wife out at midnight because her wee fortune she'd not with him share tis strange he is licensed to preach christianity when a trait of it isn't within his foul breast tis a sin to behold such a viper of vanity set apart to expound jehovah's behest so readers beware of this big holy snare who brays like a cuddy and growls like a dog who refuses to tell you there's only hell for you if you fail in your duty to christ or your god arouse in your hundreds go peel him like onions tear into tatters his garb of deceit jeer him and sneer him and never you fear him but twenty to one he will beat a retreat to every soul who peruses these verses i hope when we meet on the great throne on high that you will be able without phone or cable to know for a fact where his reverence doth lie and that will be down with his old chum the devil whose ways he has hugged as his actions do tell should he yell for some water to me it won't matter how i'll dance up above when i see him in Written 1882. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To Those Whom the Shoe Fits by Amanda McKittrick Ross. Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. There's nothing in the world I hate like a drunken woman. She drags herself so very low you couldn't call her human. She rises mostly every day at sunrise, noon or night. Her one and only thought is where's the drink to make her tight. Tis mostly low-bred mothers who love their liquor so, nor is it to be wondered at their mates would give a blow. For many a sober husband who has a drunken wife would rather far be dead than live with her in constant strife were better far that women would scorn strong drink to smell and thus evade preparing their sacred souls for hell for it very often happens that bipeds so inclined would practise tricks more filthy than drinking too much wine ere long they grow regardless of god man or sin the longer they do tipple their actions grow more grim such intoxicating drabbies should be tied to a stake their buttocks whipped with fishing-hooks, then frizzled on the grate. See how their dirty tartles sweep the muddy way, their treaders stuck in sandals, mere clods of dirty clay, hurrying to the gin-shop after they pawn their shawls, then waddling home with drunken breaths to fight with drunken trawls. Their children, scabbed and bleary, sit frozen on the step to watch their drunken mothers swagger down the track then the cry of hunger rents the stifled air oh mother give us bread for we've got a pain down there pointing to their stomachs bawling loud for food instead these strumpets slap them when in a drunken mood god help the weary husbands who toil hard all day and when their work is ended what comfort have they pray ye christians of the city ye boasters of the town show by your acts of sympathy you'll track the drunkard down reason with the fallen calm the angry breast sleek the hand that strikes you this is god's request show by your deeds of kindness show by your words of love you mean to stay their habits to prepare them for above ah the reward the promise to save a soul from hell the joy twill bring hereafter none but those can tell who made the greatest effort who sacrificed the most to bring these drunken drabbies in touch with heaven's host tis then you'll be rewarded not by flattering tongues but by the choicest being who earth from heaven hung written 1880.
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Spa, Ballina Hinch, County Down, by Amanda McKittrick Ross. Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. The prettiest little spot on earth or mortal ever saw is a mile or so from Ballina Hinch and called by name the Spa, a health resort of diamond type where springs abound galore. Once drink these crystal tonics, you'd ask for nothing more. There you've got a hall divine in which to sing and pray, which gratifies the human eye to look at every day. Right at its back there rears a manse where lives the holy Mac, whose father Adam owned us all. We can't deny this fact. South of this hall of goddom there stands a national school, where little folk are taught to write and read and feel the rule. Beyond all winds a labyrinth so intricate and queer, Within you must not enter if possessed of any fear. Its paths are strayed and crooked, they lead you here and there. The more you try your exit, the deeper gets the lair. For hours I've trodden on them, my mind a bower of dread, lest I should get benighted and this labyrinth be my bed. Once enter it, your doom is cast unless a friend is nigh, to lead you in and out its crooks and save you many a sigh. Should you chance its centre to attain, a rustic house abides, where the heart unfettered tells its joys and all its sorrows hides. Twas there within this winding span of art love came to me. The day was fine and sunny for both butterfly and bee. I'd lost my way when forward came a gentleman from town, who proffered me assistance as he led me round and round. Its rustic heart arrived at, we sat down to chat and rest. The moments crept to hours within this lover's nest. The clouds of heaven at last began to spread their greyish sails. Above this bower of rural worth so many lovers hail. We parted friends upon that day, two links of love's bright chain, which afterwards were soldered into one, for now I reign, as Mrs. Morris Mundy of fame and fortune fair, I'd stray within its nooks again to meet what I met there. The spa is bounded on the north by an hotel of old, but since its second baptism, Hydro it's called, I'm told. Its east is piebald here and there with trees and houses small, ending in a villa built which crowns the others all. Its southern wing is bounded by this winding dream of old, whose zigzag interior glad and sad tales oft has told. Along its west stands nature, whose parasols so grand have often sheltered you and me from soul's hot scorching hand. Two springs of icy waters within its boundary lie, one sulphur and one iron to drink when you are dry. There also is a ballroom in which to dance and sing and play a game of cards or bridge. In fact, play anything. Refreshments too you'll find within this spacious room of note. Tis here your wants are all supplied from tea to table d'hote. For whiskey, wine or brandy, to get these would you pinch. You'd have to tramp to Walker's Hotel of Ballina Hinch. Take warning then, my readers, when sickness tries you sore, just pack your alls and off you go for health if nothing more. To the brightest little spot on earth, so don't have doubt or dread. You'll ne'er regret a visit to this healthy northern bed. You've got a decent lodging house in old times called Hotel, but under perfumed management, Hydro just does as well. So any of my patrons who claim to be select and seek a change, this Hydro will your comfort well protect. Your souls are soothed on Sundays by sermons choice and rare. Your lungs are fed on weekdays with rarest, purest air. Your mind becomes a bower of ease and goodly thought. Your strength will increase daily, which to the spa you brought. Now buck up, sickly sinners throughout this isle of saints. Repair to where such bracing air will stay your grave complaints. Think of the spa. Dream of it. 
the thought is not enough ah you must go it fattens you the spa's the best of stuff written nineteen hundred and seven end of poem this recording is in the public domain frank farrard by amanda mckittrick ross read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist i married my wife at the altar arrayed in purest white a pledge to all who were present that her morals were all right little i dreamt such a model of purity standing there would have given to others the very thing which i alone should share she swore how she loved me only me and me alone but in her years of girlhood man she had never known a myth our life to begin with a myth during every hour for now i know from her tainted lips i married a bruised flower i got a divorce and parted now we are as twain i wouldn't accept the world as a bribe and marry a woman again you might fathom the depth of the ocean or touch the northern pole but to fathom a woman's virtue man couldn't upon my soul written eighteen hundred and ninety end of poem this recording is in the public domain a warning by amanda mckittrick ross read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist some day when i breathe my last and bid farewell to you all if i had a fault it will meet with a halt when i am beyond recall the tongues of evil and spite will cease reviling then the greatest enemies when alive will when dead be greatest friends it won't matter a rap to me then when the mind is free from stab and the body at rest in its moss-lined nest and the soul in glory clad how the tongues of the treacherous wag their words will be lost in the air just throw me your word of kindness now for when dead i will not care ah weep not for me when i'm gone don't drop your false tears on my bier for me you weep not when i am alive then i'll not want your tear life would be lined with more love and a longer life for us all if you and such as you upon earth would spill less bitter gall written nineteen hundred and two end of poem this recording is in the public domain epitaph on lady diana duff by amanda mckittrick ross read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist here lie the remains of fair lady diana who once shone a star in the heaven of fame how sadly they'll miss her who often did kiss her and trod on her virtue and sipped her champagne may her sins be forgiven though black as the raven may her soul bear the trademark of purity too for lady diana has left none to mourn her so deeply as i do so lightly as you written eighteen hundred and ninety three end of poem this recording is in the public domain Jamie Jar by Amanda McKittrick Ross Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist Here lies a blooming rascal, once known as Jamie Jar, A lawyer of the lowest type who loved your name to char. 
of clownish ways and manners he aped at speaking fine which proved as awkward to him as a drawing-room to swine i stood while the ground was hollowed to admit this pile of stink they placed the coffin upside down the men upon the brink how the stony mould did thunder upon the coffin's rump the fainter grew the rattle the deeper jamie sunk his mouth now shut for ever his lying tongue now stark his paws lie still and never more can stab you in the dark earth is by far the richer hell one border more heaven rejoices to be free from such a legal bore written eighteen hundred and eighty end of poem this recording is in the public domain sapphira slick by amanda mckittrick ross read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist the end has come her body's warm the villain's dead it now hath ceased from working harm the soul hath fled yes there she lies a mass of sin sapphira slick no more we'll hear her lying din her tongue's now thick the average age she hadn't reached all knew full well but long enough she swore and preached this limb of hell a kindly word she never spake to beast or man though often tied to bed and stake she'd writhe and damn she plies her oars on waters dead she's sailing now where wind and thunder are ahead o'er her dead brow at last she lands upon the brink where evil dwells she realizes now methinks that there's a hell she twists in pain she groans aloud oh god come nigh had i my life to live again i'd never lie give me thine aid for jesus sake oh take my soul with thy son's blood ah write my name on heaven's roll too late her doom is down below her soul's secure with him who taught her every day all things impure we're glad she's dead we all rejoice e'en at her fall no more to hear that lying voice or wicked call written eighteen hundred and eighty end of poem this recording is in the public domain the old chestnut by amanda mckittrick ross Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist The chestnut tree in the garden where first I breathed the air Still waves its pyramids of bloom on nature bright and fair It aye stands tall and stately though fifty years or more Have fled along since I was born beside its leafy shore its trunk is thick and tall and straight its boughs and branches many grow round about without a doubt to shelter all and any beneath its shade i oft have sat in happy hours of glee all care to me a stranger was under this chestnut tree oft still i go and gaze upon its lofty form of old and sit beneath its wings of peace still dear to me as gold long may its branches bright and green obeisance to me make long may it live of trees the queen for naught but old time's sake written nineteen hundred and eleven end of poem this recording is in the public domain the town of terror by amanda mckittrick ross read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist by the side of the sea there rests a town with imports of every class of clowns 
from the space within the poorhouse walls to the houses nearing the freestone hall from the lanes where lewdness and filth exist from the shanties erected at every twist from the shells of show on the top of a height down to hollows as dark as night there exists a swarm of odds and ends whom folk of importance would not call friends within its limits of rustic glow you'll find some folk as pure as snow the clergy of course are here included they don't belong to that class deluded go hear them preach on a sunday morn you'd think they couldn't tell hip from a horn they so heavenly seem in their death-like cloaks with a symbol of purity at their throats degraded indeed would the scoundrel be who'd molest these tutors of calvary tare has got doctors by the score to attend the wants of both rich and poor and amongst them all there's only one whom you could call a gentleman some of the others are coarse and rough cursing and swearing and all such stuff but in every town there's mostly one who for swearing lies is second to none and mark you the town of tear him holds within its cloak of rustic folds tis stuffed with teachers of every grade of every make and stamp and shade who try to cram you with acres of lore instead of yards as in days of yore then there are drapers to clothe you too in black or white in pink or in blue and grocers to fill your hungry bags and butchers to grease them with mutton scrags builders who don't know f from z but with aid from others can go ahead tinkers and tailors are plentiful too who make cans and clothes for me and for you sawyers and colliers and mercantile factors bobbies and cabbies and handsome inspectors jewellers who have great ups and downs lawyers the greatest of all living hounds knights who believed in a hug and a squeeze with grandma faced antiques who loved to be teased publicans don't think you're left in the cold for the devil upon you has got a good hold there's old tabby tuffy the maid of the mill whose grandfather kept a tidy wee still and bushels of other old spinsters too who fancy they're better than i or you never speak of that devil despiser lundy who wouldn't eat eggs that were laid on a sunday and crabby mcfluster of windy mount who follows women in endless count and mark you crabby's fancies are high as the pigs are low that grunt in the sty the rowdy the dowdy the crooked the straight the fat and the lean folk of every make the halt and the maimed of far-off strain the jew and the gentile the town of tare claims its undefiled bankers so graceful and sweet are samples of saintdom you don't often meet then there are elders to auction your souls the higher the bidder the larger the toll and frowsy old foggies whose hobby is money who gather and hoard it as bees do their honey dispensers of justice too rivet its heart some of whom try to act well their part some gentle and high-born some low-bred and rough while others are made of far better stuff all such noodles it takes to make up a town from lord lazybones down to the humblest clown and tear has its sample of such like galore it holds imports from every place the world o'er so the pick of the town i hold fast and tight farewell to you all i bid thee good night written eighteen hundred and ninety end of poem this recording is in the public domain the old home by amanda mckittrick ross read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist don't i see the old home over there in the square with its rose-laden walls so descriptive of care they are white as that virtue i knew when a boy beneath their sweet scent dressed in brown corduroy let me wander the world o'er and wade through its halls let me grace the king's mansions pay court to his calls 
should i bathe deep in luxury's dens of device my old home oh give me were it not tenth so nice in hours of ease midst the world's chiefest stuff though i dine in its castles where nothing is rough though i soar in the air of talent and song and drink of the best which oft leads me wrong though i flatter the fair the high-born i squeeze and sit with his majesty all at my ease yet my thoughts i revert to the old walls of snow to the home of my youth the mind it will go written eighteen hundred and eighty four end of poem this recording is in the public domain the village of hell by amanda mckittrick ross read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist i've touched all corners of this planet earth at times of plenty and times of dearth i've chatted with highborn the low and ill-bred and listened to clergy pray over the dead i've visited regions you'd fear to behold and sections unfit for young or for old but the crown of my travels to you i now tell for all that is vile is the village of hell the road it is broad that leads you there thousands of rovers to it repair to view this wee village so rustic so hot and twig all the villains who live in this spot the legless and breadless and crafty you see the wag and the witty the wasp and the bee and hood of the tavern who winks near its well how he welcomes you all to the village of hell that the devil resides there there isn't a doubt her breath is inhaled by the village throughout folk miscall the poor devil by classing him he but the devil of devils is truly a she for cunning and craft for lies her i find to excel in all evil attached to her kind her tongue wags ding-dong like the clink of a bell as she paddles away through the village of hell tis composed of wee poke-holes erected in haste the majority of them all going to waste some covered with whiskers a dull browny green while others wear faces a shame to be seen but the funniest feature there isn't a closet the needs of your nature in which to deposit so call it a dunghill or call it a well tis always best known as the village of hell written eighteen hundred and eighty end of poem this recording is in the public domain love by amanda mckittrick ross Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist My thoughts fly aloft as the birds in the air When folded in sleep a stranger to care For something is always at work with a will And that is the brain, for it can't be still It whispers of love in its maddened state Its echo you hear, asleep or awake be deaf to its sound be blind to its sway the passion of love must have its way go shake love out where the rays of the sun will burn its fibres one by one yet its ashes soon will glow again to blaze far brighter by ten times ten go drop it down in the ocean deep bury it high in the mountain peak lash it into limitless space still you'll find it king of the human race suppose you were safe in heaven's cell and i whom you loved were down in hell you would jump through sky and air and sea to enjoy old love once more with me for what of hymns sung by saints in heaven and the prayers of angels seven times seven when compared with that passion so grand so great that rules the world asleep or awake 
written 1897. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Epitaph on Large Bones the Lawyer by Amanda McKittrick Ross Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist Beneath me here in stinking clumps Lies lawyer large bones all in lumps A rotten mass of clock-hold clay Which grows more honeycombed each day see how the rats have scratched his face now so unlike the human race i very much regret i can't assist them in their eager bent written nineteen hundred end of poem this recording is in the public domain Lawyer Jock by Amanda McKittrick Ross Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist Away on the hill of revenge, north of the pathway of spite, lived a lawyer of little account, for he never did anything right. His name was Jock for a starter, a son of old miser Medill, who charged forty per cent on all money lent and kept a private we still in the guts of a kennel of bloodhounds i first laid looks upon jock whose outfit would really remind you of an underbred bantycock south of his throat so shaped like a goat rested a knot of grey a vest of red with hair on his head as black as bleak dismay jock sleeked his coils that were over oiled on either side of a line which seemed to be drawn so straight and long from his forehead down to his spine. His face, so shaped like a butter spade, was of colour a corpsey pale, with a treacherous look in every nook, from the top of it down to his... Hmm. His jacket was quite out of fashion, I knew by the cut of its front, "'Twas something like drugget his granny wore in a petticoat round her rump. "'His breeches were horsey and narrow and short in the shank, you know. "'A drab, with a stripe and socks dirty white, which made him a shabby show. "'Twas away far back in the fifties, when love wasn't quite so rife. "'Jock had the cheek to send me a note asking to be his wife.' i dyed it with human ochre tore it in pieces ten wrote on the mouth of the cover that i was no banty hen jock handed round the titbits of his missive to all the dogs occupying his kennel in which they snarled and leaped like frogs then there was general snigger one day when they turned up to jock the notice that i had got married but not to a banty cock i meet him betimes on the wayside but never within my thoughts for anything nearer nothing was never by sexes wrought the etiquette of his kennel has suffered a nasty shock by allowing within its school of sin such a dirty wee banty cock Written 1891. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Lines on Mrs. John Majuri by Amanda McKittrick Ross. Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Noblest woman ever born never sad nor yet forlorn thou hast lived the average life to thine husband kindly wife always to thy neighbours kind oft their sores thou didst well bind to the hungry gavest food still and ever doing good 
many a gentle word let fall to friend and stranger one and all clothed the naked fed the poor never shut to them thy door warmed the wandering outcast oft uttering words both sweet and soft god i pray shall thee reward whom thou didst not disregard life was severed from the friend whom god as husband didst thee send leaving thee to mourn a loss worse than any human cross nothing but his love canst heal the wound which often thou dost feel still blessed with children numbering two who ever mindful are of you toiling on thy form to bless offering thee their sweet caress long may they live thy cheek to chafe as thou didst many a sickly waif long may you live to be called blessed by those you helped when in distress and when thy day blinks out its light i pray that thou shalt see no night and as time moves as move it must to witness thee when turned to dust thy soul shall dwell in holy realms while we with grief will be o'erwhelmed parting with thy noble form that often soothed and calmed a storm tis then thou'lt join thy husband dear in glory for into all fear tis then thou'lt meet thy true reward when god shall thee with glory guard upon earth's face both broad and long thine equal yet has to be born for since the flood that drenched the earth no better being e'er drew breath written eighteen hundred and ninety End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Dr. Bushy Brows by Amanda McKittrick Ross, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. There lived in the village of Vice a doctor you couldn't call nice, for he had a face like the whole of his race, as false as the devil's. This doesn't embrace. The Dale's is as full of device. His brows were bushy and black, which denoted he wasn't the whack over they crossed at the top of his snout which showed that the wearer was merely a lout like a half-civilised steeplejack had you wished to give him a quid which into his pocket he slid how he'd shape at kissing the bible so sly and swear a lie as high as the sky which many a time he did but alas the king of clay sent for the doctor one day and told him to strip from head to hips closing forever his lying lips and of hope didn't give him a ray the soul and body which fought indeed in word and thought now ended the duel the soul went to fuel the body to feed the worms with gruel for the devil at last him caught two doctors dear in every sphere never swear lies for favour or gear don't add your souls to the devil's roll but try to attain that heavenly goal purchased alone by fear written eighteen hundred and ninety end of poem this recording is in the public domain Poe, the Lawyer, by Amanda McKittrick Ross, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Of all the names within my knowledge, e'er enrolled at school or college, the ugliest and most obscene is Poe, the Lawyer of Cackle Green. To call a man by such a name, especially one who apes at fame, is styling human nature low by giving it the name of Poe from humblest cot to proudest castle poe we call the dirtiest vessel out this thought you couldn't blink that poe's another name for stink now poe would tell you tis superior calling <coughs> by name posterior and why he doesn't alter poe to chamber damn me if i know written eighteen hundred and ninety end of poem this recording is in the public domain
Farewell by Amanda McKittrick Ross Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist Farewell to all my friends and foes When again we'll meet, God knows However, should it be above Where naught abides but holy love I'll greet you with a saintly smile That e'en the devil would beguile perchance it should be down below i'll grin at every one i know and if our lot be in between i'll bless the pope and curse the king written nineteen hundred and eleven end of poem this recording is in the public domain and end of poems of puncture by amanda mckittrick ross Thank you for listening.